Okay, so this is another Cold Star video. This is a uh, John Deere. I'm at my church. So I gotta cut the grass. John Deere LX 188, and it's got 17 horsepower John Deere V twin color. Take this off. See the engine better. Kind of hard to do one-handed. See, it's got a big radiator on it, right there on top of the engine, and it's a liquid cooled V twin OHV FD. And I'll st try to start it up. <coughs> Okay, um, now I'm going to do a cold start on this one. It's an Xmark Laser Z. Uh, it's got a 60 inch deck. It's got a 25 horsepower Kohler. Right there. And um, I'll do a quick cold start on this. And I wanted to um, go back to uh, how hydrostatic transmissions work. And um, I'll show you a little something about that. But first of all, um, let me turn it, throttle up, choke it. Make sure the uh, blades aren't on and the brakes on. So here we go. I don't like to run at full RPM. That's how the oil heats up. This mower has got the um, this is, uh, industrial mower, and um, you can more easily see the hydraulic pumps at work. So I'm gonna move it out a little bit. Uh oh. Yeah. Make sure the brakes on. Pull it out a little bit here. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Let me set the brake on here. And basically, hydrostatic, I noticed I had a lot of comments, and I didn't do a good job explaining what hydrostatic transmission, how that works on a car. I'm going to try to do it again. Um, basically, what you have here is you don't have like a drive shaft like normal lawnmowers have belts and that's what turns them but on hydrostatic you have um, basically what you have is the engine and then it's connected to a drive shaft which I'll show you if I can get the seat up there we go okay see these belts this drive shaft on this industrial one the parts are a lot bigger so it's easier to show you but you have this drive shaft this comes right off the engine um, this Kohler Command Pro 25 and then this goes into this pump which is like well actually it turns the wheels it's got two pumps on it 
this big serpentine belt right here it turns the serpentine belt which in turn turns the pumps which are right there and these are the pumps this right here is the reservoir so if I open this up there's hydraulic fluid in it see the hydraulic fluid right there so this reservoir um, provides fluid for these two pumps these two pumps right here and then once the pumps turn it builds up hydraulic fluid pressure and the pressure then goes to the um, hydraulic motors on the tires which are right in there see so the engine comes off turns the belt turns the motors the motors then create there's like little impellers in there and then that creates enough hydraulic pressure to come out into the lines and then the lines see right there that's a hydraulic uh, filter that goes through the filter and then um, it goes to the motor and as I use the two levers as I use the two levers like this right here this is these are valves and the valves open and close to um, allow or uh, reverse the flow of hydraulic fluid so once the once I to go forward the valve opens and then turns the impeller in the motor and it turns the tire that's how uh, hydrostatic um, on different motors mowers like your average lawn mowers it's not there isn't two motors usually there's only one but it works the same way and then basically on this engine um, it has one drive shaft for the two uh, hydraulic pumps and then one end of the drive shaft comes out and powers the blade so uh, I hope that helps on hydrostatic transmissions and how that works okay so I got one I got two valves here for two pumps so what I'm gonna do here I don't know how good you can see this but I put the two arms together, okay? And I hear that, e that's it. That's the pressure building up in the cylinders. In the so, as I push the one lever forward, it switches. The actuator switches the hydraulic pressure to pull instead of go forward. This is a zero turn mower. It doesn't work the exact same as your home lawn mower but it's the same principle it's that hydraulic pressure being built up in the motors and then switching to the pumps and then the pumps providing power all hydraulic systems pretty much work the same uh, one thing um, an also thing I noticed I'm gonna pull this seat off again. One th another thing I noticed about hydraulics is um, that can be sometimes high maintenance because a lot of times like you see like the pumps um, the pumps the problem is that the the reservoir if it's too small and it doesn't hold enough fluid then that reservoir can heat up and the fluid gets hotter and it turns to, tends to burn up the parts like it'll burn up the motors and it'll burn up the uh, you know a lot of times you see hydraulics being used on a hydraulic ram or something like that on an excava excavator. So when you're looking for hydraulic equipment, make sure you always got a big reservoir and there's plenty of fluid in it because if you run it low, it'll get too hot and it'll burn your um, components up on your hydraulic system. So um, always keep that in mind whenever you're looking at hydraulic equipment.